Welcome back to the vlog. It's Mr. Funk. We're back in Texas. We bought into the 1-2 game for the Max 500. And this first hand is a funky punt. Hope you enjoy it. Here at Poker House, they have a button straddle that has ultimate last action. We have that straddle on. There's a raise to 20 and then Gil three bets to $80. And the Razor calls. After he calls this three bet, they both feel weak. And I know Gil's three rating range is much wider than it normally is, especially here in Texas with all the action. So we're going to go for glory and squeeze this $160 that's floating in the middle and ship our entire stack in for 500 bucks. This is a wild play and it gets Gil to fold and the original Razor who called Gil's raise calls our all in. I ask him how many times he wants to run it. He says once and we're going to a flop. When he calls two bets, I'm putting him on something like pocket nines, tens, or jack. The flop comes five, five, queen. We hit top pair and we let him know before the cards are turned over. There's no reason to slow roll here. The turn is the 10 of diamonds and the river is the nine of diamonds. Our opponent lets us know that we're good and he folds his cards and we just doubled up our very first hand sitting down. If you guys are enjoying my content, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for the next vlog. In this next hand, we are on the big blind with pocket fives. There's a raise to 20 and we're just gonna complete here on the big blind. No reason to overplay our pocket pair going three ways to a flop, which comes six, eight, five. We have bottom set. We check to the aggressor who C bets for 40 bucks. The button calls, and we're gonna put in the call here too. The only range I should be worried about is the buttons, but he plays any two cards. So we're just gonna slow play the set and, and evaluate the next card. The turn is the 10 of clubs. We're gonna check again to the aggressor. Our aggressor still continues for $70. And then the button player decides to shove for just a little bit more money. And this is where I make a big mistake. I decide to open up the action again and raise him all in we're losing all value versus all the hands that we're beating here like jacks queens kings aces and if he's bluffing here thinking that we're chasing a draw we don't give him any rope to do so so when we put in the raise he obviously puts in the fold he'd only be calling here with pocket tens that beats us or sometimes pocket eights the whole reason we make these vlogs is so that we can go over our hands see where we made the mistakes and adjust and the perfect place to do that is on our raise discord it's a community where we're all trying to become better players you can join it's free the link is in my bio and now we're going to a river hoping to dodge a lot of cards and we get the perfect card it's the six of clubs boating us up and our opponent folds we take down a nice pot this next hand is embarrassing and it's an enormous punt all right i hope you enjoy we complete in the big blind with yeah, nine six offsuit we tell the table this is our favorite hand it's the giggities quagmire's favorite hand for family guy so i was on the five dollar straddle and i completed we're going three ways it's the small blind myself and gill we both check to him once we hit top pair on nine eight three and Gil decides to bet very large into this pot, $50. And when the small blind calls, I think this is where we could find the fold, especially against the larger sizing versus Gil. But we decided to do the exact opposite. We decided to turn our hand into a bluff when at the time I thought it was for value and protection. We raise it up to $140. In my mind, we have all the pocket threes, nine eight suited, pocket eights, and sometimes pocket nines. So after some thinking, but not too long, Gil puts in the call and the shorter stack puts the rest of his money in. So now we're playing for a side pot. And then, the turn comes the seven of hearts giving us more hope and equity in this hand this card drills our range and we didn't raise it up to check on a card like this that just is so in our favor so we decided to put in another continuation bet we put in 170 dollars worth of chips and at this moment this is where i'm ready for gil to put in the fold because this card just smashes our range but he does not put in the fold he puts in the call which feels much stronger this pot is become massive and we have such a mediocre hand and when the king of hearts hits the river the backdoor flush got there but i'm not too worried about it we're gonna put in a blocker bet here and make it very small we make it 75 dollars this accomplishes only one thing and that's lighting money on fire we put three chips in the center of the felt and gil decides to put me all in to make this pot over a thousand dollars so we just proceeded to punt a massive portion of our winnings with six nine offsuit just because we drilled top pair and now it's just a disaster because we can't put in this call we obviously are going to put in the fold and gil turns over jack 10 for the straight we lose a massive pot and we're just kicking ourselves for the big mistakes we're making non-stop and this will explain the next hand we're on the button with ace queen offsuit i don't have the exact notes on the board but the board texture was more of a lower draw heavy board and we had overs to the cards that were on the felt so the first player checks and the second player who has around 300 dollars in the stack he just ships it all in in our face and we make a very undisciplined snap call with our ace high Knowing that we're good against him without 
thinking about how we're in a multi-way pot and what happens is disastrous. The first opponent who's in the hand decides to reshove for $150 more. And the moment he does this, we know that we're, we're not gonna be any hands at this point. So we just let it go very fast and we just lit $300 on fire. But there is a positive result to this punt, and that is normally in the past, I would just put the other $150 in because I just want to see the cards and hope that we're going to hit. But we do not gamble today. We let go of our cards when we know we're beat, and I think that's a plus. An expensive lesson, but a lesson to be learned. All right, it's time to shake it off, and we're in the next hand. We add on for $200, so we top off, and we look down at ace-10 offsuit on the cutoff. As always, there's a limper or two. We decide to raise it up to 30, and Gil decides to three bet us out of position on the straddle to $125. Sometimes you can release these cards, but in position, we're going to put in the call against Gil's wide range. You know, low suited connectors, suited aces. And we're going heads up to a flop, which comes king, nine, four, two spades. Gil decides to check this. We're not going to fall for that if he has top pair. And I know Gil can find some check raises if we decide to take the lead here. So we're going to check this back and see a free turn. The turn comes the six of hearts, a rather dry card. And he decides to delay C bet for $105. I think ace 10 can still be good here and we do have an over which is an ace so we're gonna put in the call here in position and see what he wants to do the river is the seven of hearts he puts in the check and we're just gonna check this back and he says that we're good we show our ace high and we take down a nice pot versus our good friend gil who's terrifying to play against he's so talented you guys should check out his channel by the way the links in my bio we're part of ray's team and that's the same discord that we're part of to chat about hands all right so we want a pot we're feeling some momentum now we're on to the next hand we have pocket nines on the button straddle there's a raise to 15 to one caller we want to play this hand heads up so we're going to three bet this to 70 dollars the razor folds but the over caller decides to call our raise again and when he does this it does not feel like a strong hand whatsoever and the flop comes jack deuce four with two spades and our opponent decides to just lead jam into us for 125 dollars we're putting in the snap call. He's assuming we have ace king, ace queen, and we just missed. So we're going to a turn in river. The turn is the seven of diamonds, and the river's the three of hearts. We're ready to see a jack, possibly, but he shows the three of diamonds. So we turn over our pocket nines, and he flashes us five three of diamonds. So he flops and opened in the straight draw and just went for it. All right, we took down another pot. We're shaking off those losses and those punts from the past. And we're on to the next hand. We have ace queen offsuit. There's two limpers and one raise to $20. With so many people interested in their hands, we want to go bigger here to charge. We make it $85 from the big blind. And then out of nowhere, a limper decides to four bet to $200, essentially a min raise. Obviously, everyone folds to us because you're probably folding too, thinking that this is pocket aces, pocket kings guaranteed right what i see is a weak raise he min raises us with a limp and sometimes they can have ace king especially here in texas with next gen poker being the leaders here at poker house as ambassadors one of their best tactics is limping their best hands in early position and then finding the raise against all these crazy texan opponents and that's what i'm smelling right now is ace king and if i put in the five bet we can represent a premium pocket pair here because our opponent has enough behind to get some fold equity so he put 200 in the pot he has 400 behind and we're gonna go for it we're gonna go with our gut and our read especially with this min race and we put them all in i'm glad that i sensed this but i still think that this is a weakness in my game taking these risks and just hoping that they don't have that hand they're representing and that's essentially the biggest hole in my game that cost me the most is just hoping they don't have it but this time he does put in the fold and we take down a nice pot and he flashed gill my friend ace king offsuit we were right with our read but that doesn't mean we're always going to be Whew, just got a big bluff through we're feeling great and now we're on to the next hand we have king queen there's two limps and with the five dollar button straddle on i like to go a little bit bigger because they tend to over call with so many random hands so we're making 40 and only one limper calls and we're going to a flop the flop comes queen 10 three two clubs we have top pair with a great kicker our opponent checks to us and this guy likes to blast off when he senses weakness and we don't always want to bet it when we have it so we put in the check for the mix up the turn is the four of hearts and this is where our opponent decides to take the lead and he bets $80, nearly a pot size bet. I'm really proud about this play because I was able to coin this character and use his habits against him to get us paid. So we tank for deception and we put in the call 
going to a river. The river is the deuce of diamonds and our opponent decides to check to us. I don't think he'll ever be doing that with ace five of clubs. So we're going to put in a blocker bet, hoping that he might raise us thinking that we're weak again. So we put out a teeny weeny little bet of $35 into 240 and he puts in the call and we turn it over and we are good. All right, this next hand is the dream spot. So there's a limp and we're talking to the opponent who just limped and we peel pocket aces and we're in the middle of a conversation. And in the past, I used to mess up when I'd look down at this hand, but we don't. We continue with a raise while carrying our conversation to conceal the strength of our hand. So we put in $20. After our raise, there's one caller and then the action player decides to put in the raise to $125. The raiser has around $370 behind. So we're just gonna put in the smooth call here in position. I did take a risk here with the other opponent who's interested in the hand but he does put in the fold so we're going heads up to a flop the flop comes king nine four two diamonds and our opponent snap jams for 370 dollars well we're just going to snap call this because if he has pocket kings good game it was fun so we put in the chips and everyone at the table perks up and we're gonna see a turn and river. The turn is the dream card, the ace of spades. We now have the nuts, but the river comes the six of diamonds. Oh shit. And we're waiting for our opponents to flip over his cards and he shows us king, queen of hearts. We win with top set. What a hand, this is crazy. Man, nothing feels better than hitting that ace even though we didn't need the help. We are building a massive stack here in Texas and now we're gonna be playing the biggest hand I've ever played on the one, two table versus Gil Jack poker a very talented player that's much better than me. It's the last hand of the vlog, so I hope you enjoy it. So we're on the button straddle. We put on $5. There's a raise from Gil to 20 and then the big blind calls. And now we have ultimate last action, and we three bet to $80 with pocket tens. The big blind puts in the fold, but then Gil decides to four bet to $310, a massive raise. Versus Gil, I feel sort of handcuffed to call here and not fold because I think his four betting range versus me is gonna be much wider because he knows that my three bidding range on the button is going to be extremely wide. I don't think he's weak in this scenario, but he's definitely wider than he normally is with his four betting range in this exact spot. So we put in the chips going to a flop. We're both very deep here. We have everyone covered on the table playing effectively $1,500 and the flop comes Jack four, nine, two spades. Kill puts in a C bet. He makes it $180. I don't know if this is right or wrong, but my first instinct in this scenario is to put in the raise here. I know the problem with this is that that we're only getting called by better but in my mind i'm putting him on ace king ace queen he won't ever have jacks here so i think the goal for this raise is protection against any overcards and to take the pot down now because it's just so uncomfortable so i think i always default to a raise when i'm uncomfortable which i think is a big flaw in my game especially in this scenario the pot is 1300 dollars now and gil asks how many green chips i have left i told him i have nothing and only the reds are left and I think he's ready to jam on me. And if he jams on me, we're gonna throw up in our mouth because we just essentially lit more money on fire if he does have it. After some thinking, he decides to put in the fold. Oh my gosh, we just dodged a bullet, I think. This is not the right play, but I'm glad we're here to review it together and adjust accordingly for the next session. Hope you guys enjoyed this and make sure you guys join my poker journey by subscribing. And if you want to play with me online, you can join the Cheddar Club. The link is in my bio. And if you use the code funky punts when you first sign up on Telegram and chat with the team, you'll get a nice deposit bonus. Hope to see you guys on the virtual felt.